Good morning. It is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, and we have moved into a hybrid form of worship. On Sunday mornings, we are meeting uh, in face-to-face -face worship, but continuing our YouTube. For those of you who are watching us online, welcome. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, compassionate Son, healing spirit. You meet us in so many places and in so many different ways. When our need is deep and we long for you and when we think we can manage on our own, you draw near to us in kindness, regardless of our state or condition. You turn our weeping into laughter, our sorrow into joy, death, into life. You speak a word of challenge and a word of comfort to draw us to you. In gratitude, we come before you this day to seek your word for us and to enjoy your gift of life in its fullness. Receive our praise and our prayers this day offered in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God, you are the giver of all good gifts, yet we confess that our own generosity is limited. We share what we have, but often reluctantly. We complain about our lot. We compare ourselves to others and see what they have that we lack. We fear running short of things rather than trusting your attention to our needs. Forgive us our worries about tomorrow and give us generous hearts that trust in you. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This reading is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites compla complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, when you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness 
was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 145, said responsively by the full verse. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every, Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. Almighty God, Give us grace to know you more and more, that knowing we may love and loving we may praise, that the whole world may hear your name and worship you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel reading according to Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this morning, we get asked in different ways in our readings, whose people are you and what difference does that make? For the people of Israel, as, as our reading begins, they, they have received a new title. They are no longer the people of Israel. They are the congregation of Israel, the ecclesia of Israel, God's congregation. And they are journeying in the wilderness from Elim to the Sinai. And it is rugged, harsh, harsh territory. And they, they run out of food. And they are seriously hungry. And they start to complain to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die? And suddenly they find themselves with a case of selective memory. See, they forget how horrible it was living in Egypt. They forget how they cried out, get us out of here. They forget that Pharaoh was killing them. And they say, we would have been better off back in Egypt where at least we had something to eat. 
Why, why, why are you doing this to us? And, and what we have here is, is a case where a food crisis becomes a faith crisis. And before you rush into quick judgment of the people of Israel, you need to realize that materiality has been tied to faith forever and ever because people grumble and moan and groan and complain when things do not go the way they want them to go. But for the people of Israel in this story, they are complaining to Moses and God says, listen, I am going to make bread rain down from heaven. And, and at this point, for me, the story, uh, when we hear about the bread and the quails raining down from heaven, I, I think back to one of my favorite episodes of WKRP in Cincinnati, where, where it's Thanksgiving and, and, and the station drops frozen turkeys from a helicopter and people are ending up in the hospital because they're getting hit from tro frozen turkeys. Uh, it, it, when I read it, it kind of has that feel, but Terence Freethon, who is a, a brilliant Old Testament theologian and has written a wonderful commentary on, on Exodus, gives us a different perspective. He talks about looking for God in the ordinariness of daily life. See, if the people of Israel only saw God in the miraculous, if they could only see God's fidelity in the miraculous, then in the ordinary stuff of life, there would be no faith. There would be no presence, no sense of God's presence in their lives. And so he talks about this business of, of quails and, and, and bread from heaven, that this part of the Sinai, is part of a place where quails, migratory birds, fly over from Africa. And, and by the time they get to the Sinai, they are so exhausted that you can literally catch them by hand. You can pick them up off the ground. You can snatch them out of the air. And, and it, it doesn't say that, that the quails were dropped out of a helicopter. It says quails came up and they had meat to eat. And, and then in the morning, in the morning, there was dew and there was a flaky substance on the ground. Well, again, in that part of the Sinai, there is a tree lice that punctures the fruit of tamarisk trees, which are all over the place in the Sinai. And, and the fruit of the tamarisk trees secrete a yellowy white flaky substance that can be used when it's ground to bake bread and still is to this day. Now, the trick is you have to gather it and use it quickly because if you keep it overnight, it will attract ants and become wormy. Sounds familiar doesn't it? What we have here, I, I believe, is a story where people were able to see God's good intentions for them. People had their faith restored in, in the normal stuff of day-to-day -day living. But at that point, as they went from being hungry and fearing that they would starve to death, to being fed, they came to realize they were not Pharaoh's people. They did not belong in slavery. They did not belong back in Egypt. They were God's congregation. And I believe that this story is a call to us to look for the presence of God in our day-to-day -day lives. There are times when we struggle, whether it's materially or physically, those are still the times when we need to look for the blessings of God that are around us. But materiality has always been tied to faith. Make no mistake about it. And you and I are no different. 
Okay, speaking of materiality, we move on to our gospel reading. And, and it, it is a parable which is annoying, disturbing, seems profoundly unfair, and at hearing it, the, the hearer probably says, well, that's wrong. I agree with the people who complained about what they got. It's not fair. Well, you're right, it isn't fair. But we have to understand that this parable is not Jesus telling people how to run a business or how to deal with the human rights people or with the HR people in companies. It's not about that. It's about the kingdom of God. And we need to realize and remember that from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he has been talking about a reversal, about a kingdom of God that was gonna reverse the norms, a kingdom of God that was gonna reverse the economy of humankind. Um, I, I wanna read something very quickly to you. And this comes uh, from the Sibylline Oracles, which were written during the time that Jesus was alive and were quoted regularly by the early desert fathers because they describe the kind of kingdom that Jesus was talking about. Listen to this. The earth will belong equally to all, undivided by walls or fences. Lives will be in common and wealth will have no division for there will be no poor, no rich, no tyrant, no slave. Further, no one will be either great or small anymore. No kings, no leaders, all will be equal. That's the kind of social upheaval social reversal that the kingdom of God was about. And, and just before our, our gospel reading today, um, Jesus has a confrontation with a rich young ruler. And, and he says to this young guy, listen, you, you wanna be part of the kingdom of heaven? Not a problem. All you have to do is sell all you have and, and give it to the poor. And he said, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, and, and, and he walked away. And then Peter, and remember Peter was the rock on which Jesus was going to build his congregation, his ecclesia, his people. But, but, but like the people of Israel, uh, Peter, he was not yet where he needed to be. And Peter, right after these words for the rich young ruler says to Jesus, listen, listen, Lord, we, we have given up everything to follow you. So what's in it for us? You see, Peter assumed a position of privilege, assumed that they would have special privilege in God's kingdom because they had been with him from the beginning. And that's the point at which Jesus said, son, you got to realize that the time is coming when the last are going to be first and the first will be last. And then he tells this parable. It's a kingdom parable. It's not about money and salary. It's about the kingdom of God. And he said, listen, the kingdom of God is like, like this landowner. And, and he goes on to describe this landowner who goes down to, to the marketplace and get, grabs people who are standing around looking for work, brings them back, agrees on what they're going to get paid, off they go. But he keeps going back looking for more workers. And you know what happens at the end of the day, the ones that, that have been working for about an hour haven't even worked up a sweat. He pays them first, makes the rest of them stand in line, and he's paying everybody the same amount of money. Okay, couple of things. First of all, we have to look at a couple of words that are spoken in this parable that tip the balance for me. First of all, the ones that, that he hired late in the day, do you remember he said to them, why are you still standing around here idle? Do you remember what their response was? Because no one would hire us. No one would hire us. There's a key there, folks, because Jesus' kingdom, Jesus' gospel, Jesus' preaching and teaching is about the marginalized, the poor, the outcast, the ones that nobody wanted. This, this, this is 
This is a parable which portrays what he's been preaching from the very beginning. And then, and then, uh, the guys that are ticked off at the end and say, how, how dare you do that? How dare you pay them the same that you're paying us? Jesus asked them a question and it gets watered down in, in, in NRSV. He says, are you envious because I'm generous? That, that question literally translate, is your eye evil? What Jesus is asking is, is the problem not my generosity, but your point of view, the way you see things? Um, I think what we have here is Jesus saying to Peter and his disciples, Matthew saying to his first century church who didn't want to let Gentiles, the latecomers, in, and saying to you and I, saying to any who would exclude, look for privilege, whether it's based on skin color, whether it's based on religion, whether it's based on bank, whatever it's based on, you need to look at life from a different perspective. And he is inviting us, I believe, to look at our world from the back of the line. For most of us, for most of us, we have lived our life from the front of the line, from a position of privilege. And in these days, when we are assaulted with words like white privilege, in these days, when we see time and time again, people standing up and saying, for God's sakes, listen to us, listen to our pain, listen to what we're living with. I think what we have in our gospel reading is Jesus saying to you and to me, to all of us, folks, look at things from the back of the line and you will see that in God's kingdom, in God's economy, which is the law of the household, we're all equal. No one is excluded. There is no room for judgment. There is no room for privilege. There is no room for keeping out. There is no room for closing doors. It is about drawing people in. In the same way that the landowner went out hour after hour after hour to draw folk in, the kingdom of God is about drawing people into the love, into the mercy, into the grace, into the generosity of that kingdom of that God who loves us with an unbreakable love. This is an extraordinary story, which I believe speaks to our world today. And I believe we would do well to listen. And for just a moment, stand at the back of the line and observe the world around us. And maybe, just maybe we will be changed. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. God of hope, when the world is bleak and dim, you pierce the shadows with light. You help us see new paths and possibilities. For hope in times of despair, for clarity when we felt confused, for a way forward when we thought all was lost, we give you thanks. We pray today for those who feel hopeless, for those who are sick or dying, for those who mourn, and for those weighed down by heavy burdens. May each of us know and share your gift of hope. God of peace, all around us there is conflict. In our world, our communities, our families, even our closest relationships. We thank you for steps toward reconciliation in our lives, our communities, and among peoples of different cultures and histories. We pray today for places where pain, violence, and cruelty seem to have the upper hand. May each of us know and share your gift of peace. God of joy, we give you thanks for moments of delight and occasions of celebration, for happy gatherings, gentle solitude, pleasure given and received, for laughter, friendship, and love. We remember those who do not taste such joy, those who are lonely or bitter, hurt, or difficult to love. May each of us know and share your gift of joy. God of love, in Jesus Christ, your love was born in a human life. Jesus was rooted in a particular fami family Yet his love stretched far beyond to include outsiders and those rejected by others. We are so grateful to be a part of his circle. We pray for our families, those closest to us and anyone estranged from us. We pray for friends and for acquaintances, for strangers, for those very different from ourselves, and even for our enemies. Help us draw our circles of affection wider seeing our kinship with all people. May each of us know and share your gift of love. Hear us now as we pray in silence for those who have come to mind this day. All of this we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, let us journey with Jesus, the light who guides us on our way. May our hope be that the Son of Justice will one day rise 
on all humankind. May the God of peace, our constant companion, lead us along paths of solidarity and hope and give us the joy of being united in God's love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.